Good day, everyone. So it is so, so Sunday. So you want to be a nurse? Do you know what it takes to prepare? Are you serious? Yes. Are you serious? Do you know what you need to do to master these nursing exams? All right. Find up in this video coming up. All right. So it is happy so so sunday it's a beautiful day i hope you're getting some sunshine out there and taking some walks and alleviating some of that stress from all your studying all day long all right so you want to be a nurse all right well today as promised in a previous video we talked about probably going over why is it important to have a test taking strategy to have a guide yes it is important our uh, test taking strategies important yes yes they are they are definitely definitely important now why is that well the use of traditional test taking strategies and the application of the cognitive skills those cognitive skills that you're going to be tested on are those NGN skills which are basically hat pie all right so that process those processes if you do if you practice questions and you use the traditional test taking strategies and some other strategies and tips that I personally use and teach in my tutoring courses this will help you determine what the question is asking it's going to help you determine how to select the correct answer or at least how to narrow down your choices um, especially when you at times may have content that you're really not sure about but you need to make the best educated guess that you can so the use of strategies is going to be critical when you're taking a nursing exam and also when you get to uh, the point where you need to take your NCLEX RN or NCLEX PN exam. So sometimes in many of the exam options, all the options may be correct. So that's why you need those test taking strategies so you can kind of weed out those incorrect answers, weed your way through those answers. Um, and weed out the incorrect ones. So depending on the way the question is worded, you may need to prioritize to select the correct answer. So you want to have a order, a systematic order of how you would prioritize and what keywords or terms within the question or the case event tells you how to prioritize. Also for multiple choice questions, you may be able to narrow down your choices to two options. But then like many students do, sometimes we struggle to make a selection between those two. So you want to know how to reason through those two options through your process of elimination. In those situations, you're going to have to have some test taking strategies in order to apply the cognitive skill and processes. Those are essential. Those are things you're going to be tested on. So I want you to focus on those traditional test taking strategies, some strategies that I give you as well. And that's going to help you with your clinical judgment, your cognitive skills for answering nursing style, um, NCLEX style questions and questions on your nursing exams. You want to have a guide to test taking strategies for answering your nursing exam questions. You want to have a standard, a standardized, pro standardized process for answering questions. Now, how do you come up with this standardized guide? Well, I myself, a tutor or a mentor can help you to make a list as you're studying every day and practicing questions. You can make a list. Um, so, you know, I will also teach you that um, you can use a test taking guide I like the map that Saunders uses. I love it. It's an excellent decision tree. It helps you understand how to go through that process of breaking down a question. Some people may use Kaplan. They also have a decision tree process. Um, it's a very thought through process. It's standardized. And for any question type, you're going to use it. All right, so you also want to have a test taking strategy guide that's based on the subject of the question. So you know when a certain subject type, like if it's specifically pharmacology or a communication, therapeutic communication question, or if it's a disaster question, or if, it, if it's a uh, management leadership question, you want to have a strategy. And you kind of have to practice that in order to memorize it, but you want to make your list, write it down. So as you're practicing questions, that's your time to take time to practice and understand and how to go through those questions and how to use that process of elimination. All right, so I want you to work smarter, 
study smarter. I want you to prepare for your nursing exams and prepare for the NCLEX exam by answering as many practice questions in that alternate item format and in the NGN item format as possible. Practice answering those types of questions. Those questions are going to help measure your ability to make sound clinical judgment and it's going to help you apply your knowledge in real life situations and the types of questions that you're likely to see on the actual nursing exam or the actual NCLEX. Clicks. So other than having this list that you need of good test taking tips and strategies, which I, uh, like I said, can assist you with coming up with that list. We practice questions and I say, write this down. Here's your test taking strategy. Here's your test tip. Write it down. Now, some other tips you want to familiarize yourself with your course, your um nursing course, your textbook, if you're still in nursing school, and you want to have guidance with how you should prepare for your exam. Uh, maybe look at your, your syllabus. All right, so I want you to write these down and make your list of how you are going to study. So here are some study tips, how to study smarter uh, for your nursing courses and the NCLEX exam. All right, so you are going to seek out, go to your clinicals and seek out clinical um, situations that will help you um, coincide with your learning in theory with what you're covering um, in your theory course and, and help that let that coincide with your clinical experience as much as possible. No matter how the clinical learning setting or platform is that you're using, try to pay attention. Are you covering this in, is this one of your theory objectives? Um, so if you're in a sim simulation or if you're in an actual clinical situation, um, seek out those opportunities to help you understand what you're learning. You want to retrieve knowledge learned in previous nursing courses. So anytime you're learning one component, one aspect of um, your course, you're going to be building on to those courses. So this is where the traditional style of learning is a lot better. I don't like those accelerated courses. They move at a very fast pace. So unless you can keep up very quickly, I mean, you have to really build on that foundation and pile on. You're gonna, it's like building a building. It gets higher and higher. You never let go of previous information. You have to build on to your knowledge. All right. You want to complete your required reading before class. That's imper That's pertinent. That's very important because you don't want to get behind. You don't want to get behind. So that's going to be important to stay ahead, keep up with what you're uh, learning and read through. Reading is going to be important. It's going to help you pull things together so you have a better understanding of content. All right, another thing that's helpful is reading the preface of your course books and NCLEX books so you can find out um, about all the student resources that are available to you. Sometimes we overlook resources that are right in front of us, right there in the book. Um, also, your tutor can um, give you information, any PDF files and content and questions and information they're giving you. Pay attention to that. A lot of, a lot of those things are key, highly tested information. And if you study that information, you should do fine on your tests. So it's important to have a tutor or a mentor who can kind of outline and touch on things that are important or highly tested information. All right. You want to highlight key points in your textbook and in your notes and review those notes before your exams. Review those notes before your class. Review them before you meet with your tutor. That's going to be important so that your sessions are, um, you know, worthwhile. You want to make, make the most of your time. Make flashcards. I have it on here. Make flashcards. Flashcards. I put it twice. Flashcards. I love flashcards. Some people don't. Some people say, you know, maybe make the time it takes to make the flashcards isn't helpful. But for some, it can be a tremendous help for any material that you find difficult to remember. And you can also take those class, those cards with you. You can take them out and about. It's easy carrying. You can put them in a little Ziploc bag and stick them in your bag, your, your backpack or your purse or wherever, um, wherever you're going and, and just pull them out and go over that information. 
you also want to plan your study sessions and sometimes it's good to have little mini study sessions 30 minutes here or 30 minutes there um, and then take some breaks in between so um, little small study sessions are sometimes very helpful if it's very productive study time where you're actually absorbing the information that could be Monday through Friday. Of course, if you're in school, you're probably studying every day because you just don't want to get behind when you're in school and you're on their calendar, on their study plan. But if you're studying for the NCLEX, you're on your own study time and own study plan. I don't recommend very long, lengthy study plans. I, I recommend a focused study plan where you go through eight to 12 weeks. Um, so, you know, two to three months of study, four months sometimes, but not longer than that because it's just hard to stay focused that long and to continue sacrificing all the other things you need to sacrifice in order to get to where you need to be to master that content and take the NCLEX. So you don't want it too long and drawn out. All right, you want to read your class notes daily to prepare for your exam. You want uh, to use the NCSBN NCLEX test plan as a study guide. And many students get to graduate and they get to take in the NCLEX and they have never even looked at the NCSBN test plan. That's like your syllabus. That's your test plan for the NCLEX for what they're going to be testing you on. So if you're missing certain content on the exam, it's probably because you did not take questions or review the information that they mention on the outline, uh, which is on their website. Um, and it tells you what, what you can be tested on. But it's good if you start while you're in school and go ahead and look at their outline when you're in med surge look at physiological adaptation see what things on there you're already studying and make it make that outline like your checklist check it off anytime you're going over certain content check it off and see what it says how you how you should be understanding that information you can download their um test plan it is on their website for the LPN or RN test plan depending on what course you're studying so download it and pay attention to it use it as a study guide compare it to the guides that your instructors are giving you as well because you want your study to not only prepare you for the NCLEX or not only prepare you for your nursing exams that you're studying for right now but prepare you for the NCLEX Join a study group. All right, we've been having a lot of good study groups. Most of our study groups are motivational just to keep you going, keep you inspired, and, you know, give each other different tips on what has helped them, uh, other students to pass and to show that they didn't give up no matter how many times it took. Um, so I usually lead and host these study groups. It's more open, open to the floor. Sometimes people are a little shy in speaking or talking. They like to just message in the chat and that's fine, whatever you're comfortable with. But um, it's just very good to to kind of get you thinking and get you critical thinking. So um, it may be a study group may be a good adjunction to your study. You also want to take breaks during your study sessions. When you're doing individual studying, when you're studying by yourself, take breaks. You don't want to burn yourself out with studying. All right, so we have 14 tips here, the last four. Use your NCLEX review book. Yes, you should have an NCLEX review book, not only when you're getting ready to take the NCLEX, but while you're in school. If your school hasn't given you one, purchase one. It's worthwhile. Um, I recommend Saunders Comprehensive Review, but there's so many other review books out there. You want one that's comprehensive, that goes over every subject type and content and breaks it up. It may not break it up as the NCLEX breaks it up, but you want to have that content uh, broken up so that when you're studying peds or maternity or mental health you know where to go in that book and that's going to help you to read the associated content and practice all the test questions related to the content that you're currently on according to your course uh, maybe whatever topic or health pro uh, health problems that you'll be tested on
So you set NCLEX review book. You want to read the rationales and strategies for each practice question. Don't overlook those rationales and don't just read it and not understand it. Make your notes on it. And if there's something that you don't understand or you have a question about, then incorporate that in your tutor sessions. Write it down so you can go and ask your tutor. I don't, I'm not understanding this. Can you break this down for me? Um, or ask your instructor. That's important and vital information. You don't want to skip it because it's bound to come up nine times out of 10. You're going to see it in the future. You're going to say, oh, I never delved deeper into that content. So I don't understand it. It will haunt you. It will come back to bite you in the butt. So with those content, those practice questions, it may help you that you go back to your resources, go back to your books, look up that content, understand why you got a question right or wrong, incorporate your test taking strategies into that. That's how important it is. Every question that you're getting correct, right or wrong, think about the testing strategy that it took or that it may take for you to get to that right answer. How can you reason through it? How can you use your clinical reasoning? You don't want to move on to another question without understanding the content of one question, especially if you got it incorrect. So don't just keep doing questions and not understanding what you're doing. Make sure you're taking time to review the information, the testing strategy, the content, the why, the why not. Review it all. It's important because it is bound to come up again. Make notes on difficult concepts um, so that you can go back and study the concepts further. Um, again, a good way to do that is making flashcards. Write down those things that you're not quite understanding and again, have that list so you can present that to your instructor or to your tutor. And lastly, don't throw out your test results, your test reports, your CPR, any of those reports that you're getting. Those reports are meant to help you plan and set short and long term goals towards improving your test taking skills and strategies. Lots of my students will send those testing reports to me so that I can cater their needs and see where they're having some difficulties. Um, and then we can try to improve those weaknesses and make them strengths. So you want to improve and, and become stronger in those areas that were more challenging for you. So in conclusion, you want to use these tips to study smarter. And so reading and practicing questions and test taking strategies and tips, all those things together are going to help you. You want to make sure you don't get you don't get behind in your reading. So I think next time we'll talk a little bit more about understanding new material and um, new reading material. So yes, test taking strategies are important. They are important. Why? they are important and we saw exactly why are you serious are you serious about becoming a nurse are you serious about passing that NCLEX are you serious about passing your courses and getting to that degree so that you can sit to take your state boards we'll continue uh, staying up to date on my video so we're going to incorporate some future videos on how you can schedule out things um, you want to make sure you're practicing to become ready you want to make sure you have good lifestyle planning because you do need time for yourself um, but you have to manage your time to study you also want to understand why practice questions and practice readiness is important and also how to study and how to prepare, um, how flashcards may be helpful, how practice readiness gets you prepared for your exam. And probably in a future video, we'll incorporate how to delve deeper into taking good notes. How do you take good notes? How do you organize those notes? Uh, what do you do? How do you do? How do you highlight? Taking good notes is important. All right. So I hope this has helped you today. Get yourself ready for those nursing exams. Get yourself ready for your NCLEX, LPN, LVN, or RN exam. Start now. Start and study more. Study smarter. Um, and just tell yourself that you can do this. See you next time.